Welcome to the Kayla Ambrose Show. I'm your host and your travel guide to the other side, Kayla Ambrose. Welcome back to another episode here on my podcast. For those of you still getting to know me, I'm an author, a wisdom teacher, a podcaster, an interior designer. I teach online courses about all things metaphysical and uh, spiritual. I have a free newsletter you can sign up for. You can find all of this on my website, exploreyourspirit.com. You can take classes there at your own pace. You can study live in classes with me that I offer. Uh, You can have private coaching sessions with me where we talk about things. A little bit of everything there. Go check it out. Exploreyourspirit.com. And I have a weekly podcast where I like to talk about all types of things. Sometimes ask Kayla questions where you write in. Sometimes things are um, on my mind. Current events, we never know where it's going to go. Today, I want to talk about going your own way, finding your own way, doing things your own way. And like everything, uh, it's a fine line of finding your own way and doing it versus <laughs> going too far off the path where you're getting nothing done. And that can be a slippery slope. A lot of it has to do with definitions and really understanding and finding a balance between uh, the logical side of your brain and the creative side. Everything in life really comes down to knowledge and balance. And when you understand those two and live there, Uh, That's where you do your best work. It's where you live your best life. So, back in the day, when we used to go through challenging times, we would say we're stressed. This is stressful. I'm stressed out. This is so stressful. And we would talk about it. We would express it. But we would get up and still work through the stress and do it. Somewhere along the line, things have changed where the word stress went away and it was replaced by the word anxiety. I'm anxious about that. I have high anxiety. Uh, I have anxiety over that. And at some point it turned where that meant, okay, don't do it. Makes you feel bad, don't do it. That's one of those where we went off the path a little too far. We are supposed to experience a certain amount of discomfort, of uncomfortableness. It's why we're down here on the earth plane. It's why we feel pain in the body and the mind and the spirit. It's why we go through things we don't want to go through, things we don't like. Mean people, mean situations, challenging times, uh, You name it, relationship problems, health problems, money worries, pick a topic. You're going to find people who are being challenged in that in one form or another. Sometimes all of the above. Sometimes a person getting more than their fair share, we might say. And that's because we come down here to learn. This is the big classroom where we go through all these challenges and we learn to rise above them. We learn to work through them. So if we just avoid them, we're not going anywhere. We're not getting anywhere. We're not learning anything. And we're prolonging this experience. Meaning that if we don't rise to the challenge and get it in this lifetime, when we come back into the next lifetime, there'll be more karma with it. It's going to be even more difficult and challenging. So the best to do is to rise to that occasion and to work through as much of it as you can as best as you can in each opportunity. Some days are going to be better than others. Some lifetimes are going to be better than others. Uh, It's a process. It's a day. It's an hour. It's a week. It's a journey. It's a lifelong decision to get up every day, do your best according to what you can do that day. But the important thing to remember is to get up and do your best. A lot of people have been given advice that Oh, you have anxiety or that makes you stressed or worried or 
anxious, well, just take a pill. Take a pill and don't do anything about it. Now, there are times when medications need it absolutely. And that is to help through moments of terrible anxiety, panic attacks, deep grief, stressful times that have happened, PTSD, we could go on and on. Uh, I'll stop and say here, I'm not a doctor, not a psychologist. These are just my opinions. I'm not giving medical advice here. I'm not telling anyone what to do or not to do. I'm just sharing my opinion. So please accept this disclaimer and hear it loudly right now. This is not advice of any kind. So if you're under the care of a doctor and receiving medication, you trust your doctor and do what you need to do. What I'm saying though is there are some times when that can be a route that we may need for a while and then we don't. And then it comes time where we do need to challenge ourselves again in order to grow, in order to feel, in order to experience. And we don't want to delay that experience. And so it will feel stressful. But one of the teachings, the ancient teachings, if you know me as a mystery school teacher, teaching the ancient wisdom teachings, is perception. And how we perceive things have a lot to do with um, how we live our life and how we handle things. There are pain doctors that have found that when we understand pain, when we understand why we're experiencing pain, how long we will feel pain, and what that means overall, then we do better with pain management. Not that anything has changed with pain medication or what the body is experiencing, but just because we have better information that we can process in our mind, we're able to handle that pain differently. So if someone says, you're going to be in pain that's going to last for this much time or this long, and then you will feel better. It gives us a target date where we can wrap our mind around that and begin to become stronger knowing it has an end date. If we're told there's a certain amount of time, you might feel sad or grief or whatever, and then it will lift and it will feel better. There's a target date and it begins to lift our mood. There's a target date for healing. Oh, that, Cast will come off in six to eight weeks, and then by three months, you'll be returned to, you know, after some therapy, your normal use. Okay, well, I know what that time frame is. So this relieves a lot of anxiety, and it gives us a perception, a new perception. And so when we understand that, we can apply that in a lot of things in our life. The goal, again, is not to get too far off the path. Meaning, and this is tricky because we're talking about metaphysics here, and everyone's told in metaphysics, if you can imagine it, you can achieve it. But there's a long things of to-dos in between that imagine and achieving. And not everyone's capable to do those alchemical things for each outcome that they want. There are lots of studies about healing, but not everyone is able to self-heal at that level. There are a lot of stories about manifesting, but not everyone's able to manifest that million dollar dream that they have, right? They've taken the classes, they've studied the things, but there's something that's still not quite clicked in where it's manifesting or visualizing or, uh, you know, healing in that way. And so some things are still bound by the energy here on earth bound in the dimension that you're in bound by reality of things that are going on in this dimension and others. Sometimes we know why sometimes we don't. Sometimes it's part of our karma. Sometimes it's part of something we need to experience. Sometimes the answer is for the good, but we don't know what the good is at that time. And we find out a long time later why that relationship didn't work out, why we didn't get that dream job why we didn't get to go here or be there or be healed or be transformed by whatever it was. There are still unknown variables. And so because of that, we should try. We should think positive. We should have good thoughts. We should visualize things going well. But we also have to understand that 
we need to keep within somewhere of a, um, a realm of common sense and reason before the car runs off the road. So you don't sell everything and become penniless and hope that it works out. You have a plan. You have a backup plan. You hope for the best, but you plan for the worst. And so you have some common sense about these things. And it's important, like I said, because of all the reasons I stated just a minute ago here. So when we do this, then it is able to decrease our our anxiety because we know we've got plan A, plan B, maybe even plan C. So we're able to try things and see what happens. And perception is so important with that because when we can perceive things that they may be different, they allow us to handle them differently. If there's something you really don't like to do, but you have to have it done and you don't want to go through this experience, but it's something you have to do. Sometimes you can change your perception of it and realize, okay, I don't want to do this, but it only is going to last a minute and I can do anything for a minute. I can, you know, not focus on it as it's happening. I can go into another place in my mind. I can take some deep breaths and relax while it's happening. Whatever it is, I can get through it. It's only going to last a minute. Yes, it's painful, but it's something I have to do so I can do it. There are ways to like change your thoughts, change your energy, change your perception of what it is. Know that you can um, encounter this and move through it and have uh, positive vibes, what's happening, and then quickly move on and, and change your thoughts. When you're able to do this, this lowers the anxiety because the anxiety is really focused on, I can't, I can't, I can't, where the perception is, I will, I will, I will. So it's kind of a, a difference here between uh, of mind speak, one saying, uh, I'm in fear, and the other one saying, I'm a force. I'm being a force of nature. I'm stepping into my power, and I will will myself to do this. I may not want to do it. I may not like it. I certainly don't want to do it, but I will be that force, and I will do it. So it's a sense of taking back your power and understanding that the anxiety is probably still there as well, but you've given yourself a, a block of time that you can kind of hold on and do this and, and get it done. So it's using that same analogy where it's that amount of time and you're like, okay, for that amount of time, I can, I can go through this experience. So that's one type of coping mechanism. Other people have found lots of ways. Some people use crystals. Some people wear jewelry that they help. Uh, they hope that it changes their energy field and gives them kind of a field that will absorb some of the energy and let them get through it. Some people practice meditation and deep breathing. There are so many different types of ways where they go to a different place. I've known people that try to leave their bodies for a few minutes. They breathe deep for a moment and leave the body where they're not experiencing exactly what's happening to their body at that moment. The more I talk about this, the more people that reach out to me and tell me their stories of things like this they do, which they find, find fascinating. I've begun to pay attention to this a lot more and interact with other people, asking them how they handle it uh, as I've gone through my journey. For me, it started with the sudden death of my husband and the grief that overtook me and having something happen so suddenly like that and then stepping into grief and my whole life changing and continuing to change and bring many challenges. So we all go through it in different ways and we find which coping mechanisms, which skills are the best for each of us to handle these things. And there is no one right way. And like I said in the beginning of that, some people have these challenges even on things that are not as big, like a, a death of someone, a loss of something big 
They have them on things like taking tests. They freeze up when they have to take a test, even though they know all the knowledge. So how to rewrite your thoughts if you have trouble taking tests? Well, first you can ask and see if there's a way to do it differently. And a lot of people are afraid to ask. But one thing I've found working with a lot of entrepreneurs, I'm an entrepreneur and I work with a lot of people who are entrepreneurs and have built their business up from the ground up, is they are, allow themselves to think very differently, to think outside the box, to not accept the word no very often, and to find other ways to get around things, even things they don't know. They'll take on the challenge of learning it, even though it might not be something They've studied before, and they might learn it in a different way than it's supposed to be taught, but they'll learn it enough to get it done, to get done what they need to do. And I've done that myself many times where it wasn't the correct way to learn something, but I learned it to do what I wanted to do with it and get it done for what I needed. So the first thing is a lot of places you just don't know to think, but you can go to the management, let's say. Let's say you're taking a test for some type of type of certification you're looking for as an adult, something to do with work. And you're one of those people who have a hard time taking tests. You can go to the management of the place that does the certification and explain that you have this situation. And many times, some of these places have a different way for you to take the test. They'll allow you to... Take it orally where you sit with someone and they ask you the questions and you're allowed to explain uh, instead of doing a test in the normal way you're, where you're writing it down if it's too stressful for you in that way. Or you're able to show that you can do it. You show your work, right? Maybe you want to take a test um, to do something in healthcare or with um, some kind of engineering type work, you know electrical, mechanical, things like that. You can show the work when it's like, okay, how do you do this? And then you show step one through 20, how you do this thing and show that you have complete understanding and proficiency in this subject. You just are a person who freezes up at the piece of paper taking a test. So many places will make uh, account accounting for that and provide a different way for you to take the test. If not, then there are other ways where you can put yourself into a different mindset where you prepare and visualize ahead of time and meditate and you focus that when you go in there that you're just going to be talking to someone and that you're talking to them and you're just jotting notes down on the piece of paper. You, you're sort of convincing your mind it's not a test, but it's almost like taking notes on a subject that you know a lot about. Someone's asking you that question like, hey, what do you know about this subject? And you're like, oh, and you read that question? I know quite a bit about that subject, let me tell you. And so it's almost like you're sharing your notes and writing them down to share with this person. You're creating a different mindset. This was probably most popularized, and I don't know who started it, but it was someone that talked about public speaking. And they would talk about how that's a big fear for a lot of people to get up in a room full of people and speak publicly. And so way back when someone started this, imagine everyone being naked in the audience. And so you won't feel as, as nervous or uptight. And for some people that worked, like it was silly and they pictured those people looking at it like that so they couldn't take them seriously. And it allowed them to relax and as they imagined that. Uh, 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 there's a comedy movie I love called Waterboy with Adam Sandler and Henry Winkler. And Henry Winkler in the show is intimidated by this coach that, you know, is very aggressive. And so they tell him to imagine something sweet that he loves replacing the face of the coach yelling at him. And so he imagines this, I think it's like a golden retriever dog, um, just puppy smiling at him and then it's a baby and all these things he's like oh it's so cute and as he imagines that face over the coach instead it relaxes him he doesn't tense up from the aggression and then he goes on to look at his book and make these great plays for the football game and it's it's a funny 
analogy of it, but same thought. So the mind is so powerful. You can think about so much, change so much, and do these things. And when you change your thoughts like that, uh, you are able to be in a sense of control for you and a sense of doing the way that works for you. So instead of focusing on the I can't and here's why, see if you can find a way that works for you, a reach around. And then even better, see the beauty of it in your journey. There is a Japanese word for it, which I can't remember at this time, but it talks about when there's a crack in pottery and it has to be repaired and they pour gold in the, in the cracks. They melt gold and it's hot and they pour it in the crack and it seals it and it makes beautiful pottery with all these veins of gold running through it. And their belief is that the object has become more beautiful when it was broken and then filled with these veins of gold. And it is, they're, they're gorgeous. And so if you can visualize yourself like that, and that's where a lot of anxiety comes from, is this quest to be somewhat perfect when we are imperfect beings living in an imperfect world that was perfectly designed for us to live imperfectly. That's the point. The point is to fail, to fail spectacularly. And that each time you fail, you get better at failing and you get more relaxed at failing and you laugh about it and you see the folly in it and you see the joy in it and you understand that this is what it was set up for. Nothing here was set up to be perfect or to go perfectly. And if so, you're probably doing it wrong or too safe because it's not supposed to be that way. And so you keep trying and trying and learning and, and you're on the quest and then eventually you get one figured out and then you go to the next one and the next one. That's the point. And as soon as you can realize that and accept it and understand it, the more comfortable you're going to get with yourself, with your quote failures, which they're not, they're your growth, they're your experiences, they're your journeys. And you're going to see that everyone's going through that. We're all having these experiences. We all should take it for what it is, not be judging each other, not be judging ourselves, just trying to do our best every day at whatever level that is that we can do. And when we do that, that's really all it's asked of us. And over time, like anything, practice, 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 you'll get better. The more you face these things that are concerning, the better you'll get with them. The more you go on to try and try harder, the easier it will get, the more comfortable you'll get, the more your mind relaxes. So you open up to new ideas. When you're too stressed or tense or anxious, your mind closes down, your body closes down. It's in panic mode. So there are no new ideas that can come to you. So you have to unclench, you have to relax, you have to take a breath, you have to let it come back through you. And then you find your fire, you find your energy, you find the thing that's going to let you rise again and push through again. And it's different for each person, how you find it, what it feels like. Entrepreneurs will share this too. Each of them find their fire in a different way and how that motivates them and moves them and takes them into that space. The goal is not to see things as a problem or an obstacle or a challenge. The goal is to see them as an opportunity, an opportunity to learn something new, an opportunity to get a new idea, to find a different way to travel through this experience, to learn something more about yourself and the other people who are involved and the situation itself and why it's coming to you in, at this moment and what you're supposed to learn from it. And that can be challenging, I know. Let me tell you, I've had situations here in the past few years that have questioned me and rocked me to my core of what does this mean? What is this trying to teach me? And I can tell you as much as I've studied this, as much as I work on this on a daily basis, I still have my moments where I am confused as to what it all means. And interestingly enough, as someone who can psychically see things for other people 
everything that's going on for them, I can't see for myself. I have to go through it just like everyone else with not being given any information of what it all means and to have that faith and that trust that what I'm doing is right and meant to be and will work itself out. That's a hard road. That's a really hard road. And frustrating when you can do this for people all over the world every day and help them. But you can't for yourself. And I continue to do it. But there are times when I'm so challenged that I, you know, have the same feelings that I know many of you do. Like, why? What's the point of this? And that's where we're at. That is a big part of this is because we are changing from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. We are creating a new age. And everything must fall apart in order to be built new. And that's not easy. Think of anything you're going to do, whether you're going to tear down a house and build a new one, whether you're going to quit your job and start on an entirely new career that you know nothing about, that you have to get trained for for everything. Whether you're going to decide to go from lifestyle on the couch to running a triathlon. Whatever it is, you're going to have to tear down, break down, start over, and work from scratch. A lot of work is going to be involved. A lot of physical effort, mental effort, emotional effort. Everything's going to take all of it to do this. Athletes understand this. And so do entrepreneurs. And it takes everything you have to really do it. You have to be ready on all those levels to give yourself the talk and the energy and everything you need. So think about this. What is your perception? Have you been a little close-minded? Have you been thinking, I can't do this because it says here is the only way to do this is this one way or is there a different way to take the test is there a different path you can go on is there a different way still stay within the realms of common sense and reason that you can find a way to get things done the way you need to get them done is there another path open to you that you didn't see sometimes it's right there in front of you and you just couldn't see because you were hanging on too tight to what couldn't be done or you were unwilling to look at the other ideas that people were offering to you because you were too stuck in, it's got to be the right way. This is the right way. And if it's not the right way, I'm not doing it. Instead of understanding that sometimes it's about finding your own journey and your own path to get to the destination. And then that can work just as well. All right, I hope you give us some thought. Try something. Love to hear from you if you do. Wishing you all a good week.